Hello and welcome to this course with me, Rory from Hyper Production. And today I'm sitting with Sonic Academy to give you a complete guide on the brand new 10.4 Logic Pro X update. So in this video, I'm going to be talking specifically about the new amazing smart tempo feature as part of this update. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of what it does and basically just run through some of the extra features that it has in there as well. So without much further ado, let's get into it. So what is smart tempo? Well, it kind of covers a few different scenarios with what it does. And what I mean by that is you can either import your external loops from a sample pack, and then you can get them to match your DAW's tempo pretty much. So what we're going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be demonstrating that. So using third party loops, but what it also allows you to do is actually record in time as well. So you could be recording guitars or vocals or percussion or whatever you want to record and you can get that mapping or automatically fitting in to the global tempo. Another smart feature of this, which is aptly named Smart Tempo, is that you can actually get it to determine the global tempo via what you're playing. So you could be playing a guitar riff, and then it will detect the tempo of what you're playing at, and then it will basically match the global tempo accordingly. So what I'm going to show you first is basically just the original feature that it comes with when you first open up Logic, and this is on the Keep function up here. So this is a basically a brand new tab in at the top of the transport window here. So if you click on that, you get your three different modes. So you have keep, adapt, and auto. So keep is basically, it will lock the global BPM. So we're currently at 120, as you can see at the top there. So anything that we put into our project is then going to go to 120 BPM. Adapt and auto are quite similar in some respects. This basically is the feature of when you're playing, it will then automatically detect what tempo you're playing at, but they do vary slightly, which I'll explain further in this video. So let's just talk about the keep for now. So what I'm gonna do is I've got an audio channel opened up here, and then I'm gonna click record enable, and I'm gonna record just me sort of clapping, and you'll notice when I get to a certain point, it will start then analyzing what sort of tempo we're at, and then it will fix all the transients to map 120 BPM. Now, please note that this does not work when you've got metronome on. This was quite a confusing part when I first started trying to use it. I was, couldn't quite work out why it, was, uh, why it was not working. So you do need to have tempo off. By all means, you can have the bar counting if you like, but it's basically going to try and basically map out what you're sort of playing. Okay, so here we go. And then what it's going to do is basically ask us if we want to go in and further edit it. So if you click show, you can see at the bottom here, we basically have all our flex markers, which we can then go in and basically edit a bit further. But sometimes we might not always want to do that. So we can sort of just close that down for now. So then when we go back into our, or basically looking at our loop, we can then tell that it is now going to be sort of all in time. Okay, so that is a real cool, powerful feature to make sure that whatever you're playing is going to be in time with the global tempo settings. So what I want to show you now is basically importing an external audio file, which is probably more commonly what you're going to be using it for. And this is a real, real powerful feature. So let's say here, I've got a little folder opened up here with a 140 BPM drum loop. So we're going to take that, we're going to drop that in here. And then we're going to click don't import because obviously some files will have some kind of data in there when it's been exported from another DAW or maybe logic. And it will also have that information where it will then map the global tempo to that. So that if I click import, will then change it to 140 BPM, but we don't want it to do that. So we're going to click don't import. And then you'll notice that it automatically fits in at 120 BPM within our track. So let's play that through. Okay. 
And then the wonderful feature of this is that we can actually then go and change our global tempo and our loop will always stay in time. So let's drag that down. And you'll notice that nothing is moving around like it used to do, i.e. the audio, this basically sample will then either go longer or shorter depending on the BPM that we have it set up. And then if I change that through, And I can speed it up. Okay, so that is a, an amazing addition to the Logic Pro lineup of features and functionality. So that is definitely something that's up the game massively in that respect. So that's kind of similar to sort of how Ableton works, but now Logic Pro 10 has this feature. So what I'm going to show you towards the end of this video is how we can adapt that to a whole track pretty much. So I'm going to bring up a project that I've got and I'll show you how to do that throughout the whole track and you can get some real cool gnarly features out of that as well. So now what I want to show you is the adapt and auto function of this. So I'm going to change that back to maybe clap and then we're going to click on from keep. We're going to go to adapt. And then what you'll notice is that we have a basically tempo automation lane here. And then what you're going to notice when I start recording and when I finish recording, this is going to sort of adapt to whatever we're playing and what tempo. So if I hit record enable and I'll record a little clap loop and then you'll kind of get what I mean visually. Okay, so then we don't want to show it. And then you'll notice here that it's actually then adapting to whatever tempo that we're playing. And then the beauty of that is that we can actually, if you wanted to stay at one tempo, so if you've got a segment of that that you quite like the tempo and the speed of, you can then just simply drag it to then have all of them matching that particular segment. So then you've got it all going at a global 162 BPM from there. Okay, so if you're not such a strong proficient player to a metronome or a click track, this, this feature is going to help you massively. And it doesn't mean that you have to keep going in into flex time and having to like pull certain transients to be in time with the track. So that is a real powerful feature as well. And like I mentioned, that adapt and auto are kind of similar in that respect. So if we say have, let's start playing a bit of a loop. Okay, and then it's going to be all in time. So if you if you are, want a mixture of the both, so you want it to stick to a global tempo, but then you also want it to kind of gauge kind of what you're playing, then auto is going to be the setting for you. If you want everything to lock in to the global tempo, always have it on keep. And that's typically what you'll be working with because you don't normally change your global tempo settings throughout a track. So that is probably going to be the setting for you. Then if I click it back onto adapt, this is another cool feature. So when we have it on adapt, you notice that the BPM was kind of changing. So you can see in this automation lane that it was changing the tempo. Now, the great thing about that is that it changes everything else within that track. So let's make a, another quick clap loop. Oh, let's get it metronome off, count in and delete that. So here we go. Okay, so it says there that we've got multiple different, or it's basically detected multiple tempo variations. Now, this doesn't just apply to the track that we've recorded. What we can then go and do is add, let's say, a drummer. And then what that's going to do is actually going to change the tempo of the drummer as well. So that is a real cool feature here. So let's just bump up that. And then it's going to, that drummer track is then going to adhere to the global tempo as well. Okay, so you can imagine that when you're recording guitars or vocals or anything like that and you want to quickly get some ideas down but you're not too fussed about the tempo, 
you just want everything sounding in time, then this is a definitely a cool feature for you to add in there. So what I want to talk about now is moving on to how to change the tempo of a whole track. Now this bit is really quite cool. So I'm going to switch over and open up a new project that I've been working on and then I'll show you how to change everything in time using the smart tempo feature. Okay, so we're back in our project that I mentioned that I was going to be showing you. So what we can do in here is change everything to basically the global tempo. Now, the previous way of doing this is if we drag that down in tempo, all the audio regions will then obviously shrink and then basically try and stay in time with itself, if you know what I mean. So it will kind of just match the original tempo of that audio file. But what we can do now using smart tempo is actually get all everything to basically match the global tempo. Now what you need to do is switch on flex time for all of these. Okay, so you need to click flex time, then you're gonna hold down command and shift, and you're gonna click on these flex timers, and then you need everything to be enabled. Now you can just hide those so everything's back to normal. Then when I start dragging down the tempo or speeding up, you'll notice that nothing shrinks or elongates. Okay, so then what we can do is then change all the tempo of our track. And if we want it slower. Or even go even slower than that. Okay, so for this track in particular, it's probably not going to be sounding the best slowed down because it is sort of a drum and bass track, but you kind of get the idea and understand how quickly you can have variables within your global tempo. And you can actually come up with some really cool other ideas. So if we slow that right down, you're going to be getting some cool new sounds out of that. So let's put it down to 13 BPM. So you can actually start getting some real, real interesting sounds out of that. So if you've got sort of a breakdown in a track then and you want to half time it or something like that, then you can easily do it using the automation lane at the top, using the tempo feature. And then when you've got flex time enabled, you'll be able to process every single bit of audio within that track. And you don't have to worry about sort of making sure that other things fit because it will do it all for you. So that is the brand new smart tempo feature within the Logic 10.4 update. It's a fantastic new feature added to the lineup of already amazing features within it as well. So in the second video, we're going to be talking about the brand new Chromaverb plugin, as well as taking a brief look at the brand new updated Space Designer Reverb plugin as well. So I've been Rory from Hyper Production. You've been watching Sonic Academy. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.